Welcome back to Anchor Designs, I'm James and today we are going to be restoring, reusing and working out how to re-tire our bandsaw wheel. So uh, let's jump straight into it and get started. Okay, straight off, um, previously on the first part of the restoration, if you want to go and see that then uh, follow the link in the description is we started restoring uh, these wheels and this just to give you a very very quick update this originally uh, was designed for spiral bands so they're spiral band slotting blades and they're designed to cut in all directions but they're pretty pants so that's kind of why you don't see them anymore um, and these had kind of been worn really really badly um, just because the, the spiro bands has just eaten away completely the um, a lot of the middle of this causing kind of a concave uh, shape onto here so just kind of off camera to, to get me in the mood for uh, doing this is I've got some uh, rapid metal for this just Evo stick it's about three quid for a tube of this and I'm just building up that uh, concave into a bit more of a convex shape so the actual bands themselves you want to be able to sit these at least being flat a little bit of a crowning on top of the wheels um, is quite you know it's quite nice and that's going to allow it to stay on as best as possible as well as shaping this we're going to need to put some um, some sort of rubber or like a nylon uh, tires on these so uh, first off what I have done is I'm not going to show this on camera because it's pretty boring this was just done with quite a long drill bit to kind of push this um, rapid metal on here I've made a bushing on the MyFood lathe and this is just going to pop into the center here and we're going to clamp this down and then we're going to start actually turning this to be able to get this shape now I can't get this onto my metal lathe, which is my MyFood ML7, so I'm going to have to kind of do this with an eyeball. Um, what If you are doing this, make sure that you either make a bushing or you find something that fits the bore. You want the bore to be equal distance from the OD of the actual wheel. Don't try and clamp this on the lathe because this isn't a machined or registered surface. You want this to run as concentric as possible. There's kind of no right or way to actually do this, hence why I'm going to do this in my wood lathe because I've got the height. If you have got a metal lathe then uh, that actually fits, then good on you. Uh, so I'm going to do this, as I say, off camera. Let's jump straight back into it as soon as we've done it. Okay, very, very quick. I did say I'm not going to do this, but I thought I'd just um, show you my setup. So I've got the bushing in here um, onto a mandrel and I'm just going to sand this. Uh, just so it's flat it's a different color and it sands up slightly um, slightly lighter so I know when I've kind of got that flat as well I'm looking down the uh, line from here to a line on the back of the board so I can kind of get a rough idea from when it's actually uh, concentric okay back over to the bench now and I did quite a bit of research on this and most of what people have found for DIY hack job is was using inner tubes. So I bought myself a set of 10 inch um, inner tubes. They don't fit the circumference right, but it's the you know rough guide to what we've got there. Um, and I was gonna use some contact adhesive and I can't find, I can't remember what these are. I think they're like 9.4 inches uh, wide. They're a bit of a funny size and I can't actually find replacements, proper full replacements for these. Um, but what I did find is these industrial uh, rubber bands. So these are, as I say, literally just rubber bands that I've slotted on here. They do fit nice. They don't cover the whole track of the, um, of the wheel, but I have tried these off camera before we, um, we did the uh, crowning and they did work pretty well. So I'm going to try these first. If it doesn't work, then we will try the inner tubes, but it's something to look out for. So let's try this first. If it doesn't, let's just do what everybody else has done onto, uh, onto these. Okay, well, I have just tried it. And I think the problem when you stretch the rubber band is that some parts are not under stress, so they're, they're not going to stretch. And when you finally put the last piece on is that you've got a bit of material like that, so it's pretty unbalanced. And it started to 
um, want to chuck these out and actually pushing the blade off as this was riding. So it just nicked them here. So I'm not going to say these are very good for this particular application. If this was a quarter inch um, bandsaw uh, band, then we probably would be okay because we're going to be nesting the gullets and the center of the blade on the, on the middle um, point of the band. But we're not, we're using this metal cutting blade and this is kind of what I want to use for the type of stuff that I'm going to be doing on this. So, uh, let's try the tyres. Let's try that. Well, I think we're about we're about there. Um, not perfect by any means, um, but we are tracked in pretty pretty well. Now I'm not going to touch anything. It is currently live, um, but we've got the guides that are working well. I'm having a little bit of an issue with the blade. I don't know if it's the. I'm going to check how accurate and straight the blade is, but I seem to be getting just ever so slight bit of wobbling here. So it'll engage in this back bearing. It'll just skip it ever so slightly. Um, we've got good contact on both wheels. The only adjustment for the tracking is on the top. You can't do anything on the bottom, um, which is, you know, it is quite common, but I'm using a much wider blade. Now for this little tiny machine, I'm asking a lot of it. You know, this is not designed to do this on a half inch wide blade. Um, it, I'm using a 14 TPI in case you're interested because they're the same bands as the, um, the little portal bands that you can get, you know, like Milwaukee does today. Uh, but considering this was, you know, it was rubbish really, um, I've managed to get a working bandsaw for around 30, 40 quid, which is, uh, well, super exciting. So let's take a closer look at what we've got and where we are now and with the tyres again. I did cut these, um, not particularly very well, and I've got some of the um, adhesive just on the side. It's not quite dried. It's been um, it's been about eighteen hours, but it, it just feels a little bit, you know, a little bit tacky. Let's take a closer look. Okay, here's the tyres on here. I can't get you that close because my tripod. I'm gonna just move you across like so and you can see the tires again it's not um it's not kind of fluffy on here these bits are just you know that haven't quite cut well rubber's not the easiest to cut but we're tracking pretty well i've got the blade just off the wheel now that's not kind of typical it's more of a cat moses uh, there's a really clever bandsaw bloke i can't remember his name it'll come to me um, but he recommends putting the actual teeth of the blade just off the wheel, which is what I've done here. And I've managed to get that pretty good. So I am quite happy with that. 
but I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's off, then it's back on again, and that's a tracking issue. Um, and if I adjust it too much, then I start riding into the back of the uh, body of the saw on, at the top. Um, so that's kind of a happy medium that I've got at the minute, but you can just see that I'm, I've got a little bit of a wobble there. Um, and again, tracking issue, but it is working. I'm still gonna have to fine tune this. I've just had this all set up as of about 10 minutes ago and I'm quite happy to where we are at the minute. So uh, let's take a look at the guys that we've done previously. Okay, the guys, uh, if you wanna check those out, I'm gonna put the link to the description. That was the previous video. And this section here is a permanent temporary thing uh, <laughs> because I'm not 100% sure how I want to do this. I typically have a solid bar here, something threaded to adjust the height of it. It just makes it nice and easy. I've since put wing nuts on everything, so I just need to use one one tool, which is you know super, super handy. Um, and I want this to be a bar with like a V-groove in it, so that you're gonna um, square up onto the point of the thread of this bolt. I hope that made sense. One thing I have bought is one of these, which is a cheap Chinese light. It's made by a company, Nielsen. And it's about three quid, but it just rests on there, magnetic base on that steel guide, and you can just focus it exactly where you want it. Super handy, that. Super, super handy. Three quid. Um, and yeah, it's working. So enough talking. Let's actually put this to the test. So for our little test that we are going to be doing here, I've got some acrylic, which is a pen blank. I've got some oak flooring, uh, sorry, solid teak flooring. Uh, and I've got a bit of brass. I'm not gonna put steel on it. It is a metal cutting blade, but um, I kind of don't wanna get steel swarf everywhere. So that is working super, super duper well. Um, for what it is, you know, it's never gonna be perfect. Uh, I haven't got any room at the bottom and I really, really haven't to make uh, another set of guides. Um, but for the length of the blade and the distance between the both wheels, it's not massively important. What I am gonna do is put a blade brush and I'm gonna do this off camera, um, but I'm gonna somehow mount it underneath. I'm just gonna cut this off and I'm gonna use an old paintbrush. I'll probably use one with nylon brushes, like so, cut off the top and then just, um, you know, CA glue or something onto the side just to, um, to keep these wheels uh, as clean as we can. But I think that's going to be a wrap. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video. Super exciting. This was a completely new challenge for me. We've restored, we've rescued, we've adapted, and we have repurposed this lovely old bandsaw. That's quite a nice size for the little jobs that I want to do. So, again, if you do like the video, then please hit subscribe and uh, give me a, a like if, uh, if you did. And we'll see you in the next time. Thank you.